Good morning, traders, and welcome to the uh, live trading webinar today with JTrader, a stocks trader. Uh, we will go through um, li some live trading uh, uh, activities in here. Uh, so you're going to get uh, insight from uh, Joseph's uh, uh, setups and the way that he looks uh, at uh, activities in markets here. here. And uh, uh, how he reads the order flow, how he applies it to his trading, uh, how he uses Bookmap, uh, and um, how he gains an edge. All right. So uh, one of the greatest things uh, with these webinars here about the live trading is also watching the way that they're managing their trades and managing their money. Uh, the, you might have all the great setups in the world, but you really knowing how to manage it is uh, is something uh, something different. Okay, so uh, anyway, you guys know who JTrader is. Uh, he does offer uh, mentoring services, so I'll put this into the chat uh, as we continue. And uh, I need to go through the disclosures, and then I'm going to jump right into the S&P E-mini. Uh, we'll look at that for about 10 minutes, have some interesting things to show there. And uh, uh, then when Joseph comes in, probably in about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, we'll turn it right over and get into some stocks. Okay, so uh, just the first two disclosures here. The general disclosure, and this is important, uh, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot act accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance, I'm sorry, an investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, so let's jump right in and uh, take a look at this uh, chart here and uh, uh, maybe someone can uh, uh, tell me immediately who's in control here. What do you guys think? Sellers, exactly. All right, yep, MC Loco, Alan, uh, others here uh, in YouTube. Uh, so this is, I mean, you can see, now this is just classic. Um, we look for this all the time, and this is the opening drive, right? Uh, so we typically see this kind of behavior uh, right around 9:30. Uh, usually, um, a quick move to one direction, and then the opposite uh, drive uh, the other direction. But look at this. This is what's important and so important about market structure to understand. Okay, so here uh, we have market structure. Uh, and uh, here uh, we have some stops, we have some icebergs, etc. cetera. Uh, it, it just kind of breaks above the structure. Uh, then uh, we kind of retest back down here, bounce back up uh, and kind of retest the, the swing here. Not the, not the uh, high swing, but this previous swing. Okay, there's trap traders up in here and then they drive, they're driving it away uh, from this whole area up here. Right. Look at the profile here, uh, and th this is just typical. This is what it takes to drive away from an area of a uh, of value that was uh, created since uh, 8 a.m. this morning. Okay, so you see the the move up here, uh, the consolidation, and then the move away from it. So we stick with this move until we see something different. Okay, something else in the order flow. Sellers are in control. They took control. Well, basically around, right around here, uh, but we also look at the bottom of the range here okay, for retests. Now, we also look for uh, different uh, areas uh, for, for price to come back up and retest. I want to go over that in just a minute here, uh, and I'm going to ask you guys some questions about that, where, where we look for these retests to come to uh, in, the, in the market structure. Uh, however, I, I want to go over first the bigger picture, uh, so important, and... Um, you know what we were looking at yesterday and, and the follow through. So yesterday we knew uh, we get best best to look at on on the hourly chart here. Uh, we saw the high the strong move to the high side here, okay, and we knew that this was a strong move. Uh, I mean, just look at it, uh, and uh, you know it, it's dominating these candle these big green candles are dominating here. 
uh, and we're looking for continuation, but we're looking for a slowdown up in this area up here. Okay, because this is where we we found sellers before and we found rejection uh, in these areas here. So the rest of the day, it looks like it closed just above it here. Uh, but if you look over on the daily chart, look at where it dropped from uh, back on Monday, uh, April 11th here. And that's where it opened up and dropped immediately. That's kind of where we retested up here. And we didn't spike above that. So, or the S&P didn't spike above that area here. So uh, what you're uh, looking at here uh, is sellers are still in it uh, from this point on, basically. Okay, if they're positioned up in here, sellers, they're still in it. Okay, uh, in, in concept, at least. Uh, and uh, we were looking for the spike above into these little areas in here. And uh, we, we noted the strong momentum. We're looking for this move into this area here. It spikes above it. And now we're getting kind of a retest back down to it. I'm looking for, to see if we can get down below that and retest back down to here, maybe here, maybe all the way back down to here. Okay, so this we're looking for strong rejection up here, and it's already showing us it. You know, filled the gap immediately, uh, as you guys can see, and uh, we spiked up above it. Sellers are still in control. Let's see if they take control now. Uh, that we'd be looking for these moves down to retest into some of these areas here. Okay, so around four. 44.46, obviously 44.50 is uh, uh, going to be pretty important here on the hourly, uh, but uh, that would be, you know, kind of the first area to take a look, uh, and then lower, uh, and then some of these other, other buying tails down here uh, would be looking for a retest back into these areas here. Okay, on the 15-minute chart here, let's look at back just at today. You can see the gap fill. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I really like it down here. So uh, 44, 36 or something like that uh, in, in this zone here, uh, 33 to 36, somewhere around there. Uh, and looking for it, see if we get continuation. All right, so beautiful stuff. We're looking for that move higher. We're looking for the rejection. It's happening. Now we're looking to see if we can come back into the range and retest into some of these areas here. Likely we're getting, we're getting a little bit, bit of a bounce here off the the top of this range here as you can see in the swing uh, but uh, let's see if they can push it through now and that's what we're looking for in the order flow here all right so now let's go to book map and uh, yeah here we go so sellers coming in looking for them to continue to push this uh, into uh, our 50 level here 52 50 uh, and uh, so regarding uh, pullbacks um, where are some good areas to look for pullbacks What do we typically look for in pullbacks? Uh, let's see, in YouTube, um, you, you guys cannot see uh, very well. All right, I think it's on high definition here. Yeah, it's on 1080p. Okay, 58, you guys are looking for 58. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 58 uh, is, is not is 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 pretty good. Um, I mean, it could pull back, you know, even up to here, 62. The swings up in here, uh, and then in this area here, this one's a little more challenging. Where would you guys be looking for for a pullback in there uh, on this kind of strong drive uh, to the downside? Eighty, okay. Yeah, way up here. Um, yeah, that's uh, boy. I think that would be kind of a, a reversal at, at that point. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really too sure on this one. I mean, like uh, I, I do like the swings here, but then we start to look at maybe clusters uh, and um, uh, little kind of areas of consolidation. So we zoom in a little bit here. Uh, and uh, this isn't bad in here, 67 or even here, 70. Uh, and then, the, you know, sellers take control, consolidation, they take control. They already pulled back here uh, to 65 where it broke from and they continued. Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, yeah, these little areas here, uh, this, these little pockets, these little areas of consolidation and, and continuation here. 
All right, so we're going to be looking for a, a potential pullback into those areas too. Uh, and you can still be bearish here uh, on any of those moves. In fact, uh, we, we also look for uh, at a certain point, we're going to, and they'll come in hand over fist. Uh, they always, they almost always do, uh, is we're looking for uh, those uh, mean reversion traders. Uh, trade it back to VWAP, point of control, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, we, we keep an eye out for them. Uh, anyway, it looks like Joseph, Joseph is here. Five minutes to start. Let's see. Okay, so uh, I'll wait until I hear his voice. Uh, and you can see in the chat there, uh, he has a 203 take profit on Netflix from 254 in a short call. Wow. Yikes. That's a big move. Um, all right. So there you go, Alan. You were asking about uh, uh, the um, uh, Netflix stock there. Uh, which trading software is this? Oh, yeah. Okay. You're, you're answering a question. Yep. All right. Yeah, not really seeing much still uh, yet. You know, likely a, a move back up to, we're up at 60, but uh, seeing some buyers here. So maybe a little bit higher, maybe 61. But, you know, like we covered yesterday, take a look at this move here and look at where that volume is, right? It, it, it's not strong and consistent. It's not, not so bad in here. It's... it's but it, it's kind of really here, right? The, the buy volume, the, the bulk of it. So we get sellers below this, look for the move right back down to 52. Okay, so it's kind of testing these areas right now. Okay, so we're just kind of reading the order flow in here. Uh, and um, uh, I, I like the, the, the buy volume up here. So, oh, here we go. So now if we get back up here, we should get the move back up to 61. Pretty, pretty good buy volume. Let's see it a little bit higher here, and then the move back to 61 liquidity here. Okay, let's see if we get the order book to show us a little bit here. A little bit, not much. It's not really, it's, see how dark it is around these areas? So you know, we're looking for this move, but it's it's not high probability. Okay, if we had the order book really aligned with us the, on the bid here, and the reaction was the uh, 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 the buyers, then we're looking for the move. Um, you know, just it's a higher probability outcome. So uh, here's our move. Okay, so there's there's uh, 61. Now, question here I have is like, that's pretty good buy volume. Uh, so this might be the mean reversion up to 66 here uh, at this point. Okay, so, uh, you know, a way to manage a consideration now this is not a trade recommendation it's just you know we go through these different scenarios uh, and uh, we look uh, to understand the order flow here uh, and have a bit of a bit of a change in heart now uh, because this is pretty strong I, I think we we can get our our mean reversion guys to jump on board here uh, and trade it back up into maybe 65. okay now we're going to get pullbacks too And uh, likely, I, I should say, at least. And where do you guys uh, think uh, the pullback might come? If you're looking for it. It's kind of answered. The price is answering that question for you right now. Yeah, I, I I like the top of the range here first 59. Uh, but uh, yeah, I also like this cluster here. Uh, and you know, it could even come back down into kind of here. Uh, and uh, let's just uh, take off the delta column here. And yeah, somewhere around in here. Uh, yeah, I like it, uh, MC Loco. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, it's the, the first one is already pulled back and, and we already see it's kind of bouncing back up. So and they're pulling on the on the offer here at 62. A little bit more on the bid would be great. And we should get the shot up into 64 and 65 and maybe VWAP 66 here. OK, 
Okay. But see how we had kind of a change in heart here? We're, we're looking for uh, just, just the move up into... Um, well, we first started off and we talked about 58. That already had happened. So where the next one was uh, at this kind of uh, 60, uh, 61 area here. Uh, and, and it's pretty strong buy volume. So now, you, you know, first we're just looking for a pullback and then we want to see if, or this move back here, bigger picture, it's a pullback. Um, but uh, uh, just to move back to into that area, now we're looking for the continuation here. Uh, buy volume looks good. Right, so they're they're just testing this swing up here. Uh, this was that next area where we're looking for, but there's still a lot of buyers in here, so still looking for this to maybe come up into uh, the VWAP area, and then that's around 66 or something. So let's see what it looks like over here in the order flow. Try to match some things up here. Not bad uh, in the, around the 67 area and liquidity filled in here. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's draw that line up uh, and see if we can get a pullback into that area. All right, Joseph is uh, having a coffee and getting ready. Very important part of the process. And I'm very envious of his coffee maker. Um, all right, let's see it. Let's see it, guys. Let's see this. Uh, these buyers try to try to pop it up in here. <clears throat> I think this is a high probability trade. This kind of mean reversion at some point, you know, during the day after after these uh, initial drives, uh, traders just they're they're looking for it. They're 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 antsy uh, to 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 do this move, uh, and uh, we can look for it every day. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we'll have to uh, converge on. Uh, good, morning. good morning, everybody. Hey, good morning, Joseph. How are you? Uh, one second. Cannot hear Bruce over here. You cannot hear me. All right. Bruce, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. No, I cannot hear. Just one second. Some of you guys were in YouTube there. We're looking for the move to 64. You nailed it, Matt. Yeah, POC is a little bit, uh, well, POC kind of moved down. The previous POC was up here around 77. So just shy of uh, the VWAP that I have here, and just shy of 65, it looks like. 65 trade, 17 contracts traded up at 65. That was it. As we wait for Joseph here, I guess he's got some... Uh... Good morning, traders. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Bruce, finally now. All right, all right, excellent, excellent. Uh, so uh, let's see, are you sharing your screen in here? Uh, yes, let me know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah, great. All right, okay, so let me uh, pop it out. And everyone should see it. Oh, yeah, we're, we're looking very forward to uh, this uh, Netflix uh, uh, trade that you took. Well, today was uh, uh, really one of those days to remember. And uh, 
pretty proud of uh, i mean this is another trade of form uh, uh some of my inventory and we took a short up here uh cover partial the rest over here so we took the all uh unwind and uh i want to go over first what we saw at the gate so netflix had earnings yesterday remember and uh i wrote, i wrote over here a few notes traders so we had uh, over here this was the after hours okay so we had a pop filled over here so we went from something like 350 back down to 250. you know remember just like twitter what happened at the time it seems very similar uh, now let's look at uh, what happened here so in pre-market we were looking at uh the price section i'm gonna zoom in over here so we started seeing like this uh pop over here to the 254 255 uh, which was this level over here, 254 to 55. You can see that we had some decent support. Uh, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to change it one second. Okay. So we had some decent support over here. 253 and that area over there. Now, it started to fade and then reject over here around 8 o'clock. Reject that again, so lower high, again lower high. At the open, this was the, I would say, beautiful pop and feel that I like to trade. And uh, my video was trading over here next to me. So we are looking for this 930. And why this uh, bounce at the gate? Okay, so this is the pre market low. It's 243 and 90. Why this bounce over here? Because a lot of traders are looking for the discount. Okay, so they think, wow, this is Netflix. I'm going to buy Netflix on a dip. Netflix can uh, become uh, a very good long over here. But instead, they're basically buying a falling knife. So once you, once you have this uh, bounce over here, and it's not only that, it's also from uh, short who are covering at the gate, you know, they're afraid they're probably going to go up. You're looking instead to short. That's what we did in the room. So we are looking for this pop. You can see over here that above we have some decent amount of uh, resistance. Now I want to put over here also the volume dots. So you can look what happened. Okay. Open, big soak. They try over here to push above 248, 249 main hold on a number 250 and you can see over here we started like to sell we started really like to dump so even if you take a trade over here 246 247 your stop is really minimal around 250 and then we started to have like unwind 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 and they were selling over here massive massive i mean we had from the open traders like 40 points down over here 40 points unwind my target is 203 i called that for a daily uh daily reason which is a main support we started bouncing over here a little bit around uh, 213 uh to uh, this area 213 uh bounce over here but it's still down trending so i'm not really looking to cover the whole position and uh this was a juicy one beautiful then i'm looking at uh, some small caps this morning i'm looking at uh, tesla as well we had the trade on LL, uh, LLIP. Uh, let's look also at Tesla. So at the open, again, another of those uh, trades. Uh, I was looking first at ES as a guide. ES was uh, simply fading. Uh, on a curl, on a curl of this ES, I was looking for a longing, but instead we didn't have that. Uh, we had a pop, we had a fail, uh, book up over here, pushing 1035, faded over here, rejection of VWAP, JLON rejection, beautiful fade. And now this is going to be a fader, ideally until 965, 970. 
uh, more resistance over here. Nice even to recycle on this uh, heat over here, 1003, which is this uh, small reversal bar over here. Okay. So pretty good downtrend. Uh, support that we have. Check on the. Over here. So I'm looking for that 973. So this is the main support. And then I'm looking for this 962. Okay. So let's start and continue to watch Tesla if you didn't this morning. So oh, when we have this uh, main fader, I'm not really shorting weakness over here, breakdowns. I'm looking to uh, pullbacks and then looking for a short. In the meantime, while we were talking, just before connecting, I was a little bit slow because we took a top tick short on a small cap. And uh, it's paying pretty good. Again, using bookmap for taking the top tick, maybe after. If we have time, we can uh, we can watch that. Tesla has earnings tonight, buddy, and uh, uh, Netflix had yesterday. The most difficult thing is uh, holding your profits, so not really covering too soon. Because when you see something like this, you're like up 10, 15 points. You want to take profit. Instead, it came down 40 points from the open. Uh, actually, yeah, a little bit less than 40 points, but you know, still a substantial move down here. Now let's look if we can have some other possible ads. So let's look for your entries. It was really like a busy morning. Uh, had uh, one tiny stop in six good trades. Joseph, I'm I'm just curious, like uh, like today, I mean, you you knocked it out of the park. Um, mm -hmm. So moving forward, like um, how do you? Now, you're going to want to hold on. I mean, the way you want it. I mean, I'm imagining the way you're managing your money uh, is you're going to hold on to that, uh, and uh, you're going to look for other great setups and not just start jumping in all over the place and and uh, oh here's another setup here's another setup and start giving that money uh, back. Um, yes. So how, how yeah if you can just maybe talk a little bit about that like how how you kind of what's your it, it's more psychology, I think, or it's money management and psychology. Yeah. So yesterday I wrote something. I don't know if I posted it also over here, but I wrote something about patient, patient, patience. So, and I made the example that I have two trading strategies. One has a more than 80% win rate. So one would say, fuck, that makes you millionaire. Sorry for the word. And the other one is having a little bit less than 43% win rate. And uh, everybody would think that 8% uh, win rate plus actually is around 86, so really, really crazy. I would think, well, that is really the best strategy to trade. No, <laughs> actually, the one is making much more money is the one with 43% win rate. And I ask and I put this around and a lot of traders were telling me, oh, yeah, they're giving me suggestions. But I didn't put that for suggestion. I was putting that to hear opinion with the traders. And few guys came out and say, oh, it's the risk reward. Exactly, is that. Because I can have 87% win rate or whatever, but if I have like one R, one R and a half, and the 43% I have like almost four R, I'm definitely gonna be, I would say, winning more with uh, that, uh, uh, I would say, 43% win rate. Especially because when I lose on the 86% win rate, I have like a bigger stop in terms of R. Okay, so more drawdown on the position, more drawdown on the account. And that really is a key in risk management. The second part of risk management that we can talk about today is how to hold the trade. 
I mean, if you look over here, and just Bruce made an example uh, that you're holding, you have to hold. And just look at this trade. Don't look at the stock itself, okay? Because of the stock over here, you can look really for uh, so many, I would say, so many bars. I'm not really interested in that. He said, I want just this. You start looking. Okay, let me put it like this. And uh, if you go over here and study configuration, you can see how I have set the candlestick interval one minute, okay? Interval one minute. And uh, just put it over here. Okay. So you can see the trend. We don't have like peaks, so relative high, and then we have a pullback and then a break. So that in that situation would be where I get out half of my position. And then, uh, for example, on the trend line and curl back up, the remaining half. No, over here we have a steady downtrend. So the only first pullback is this over here, okay? This over here. So we are in a really ferocious sell-off. You don't want to really to end this. You want to simply to hold this. I mean, this is a perfect trade, and you want to simply try to maximize profits when you have something like this. So what is the point? Try to hold. Try to hold. Try to hold. Um, there are two main, I would say, different ways to, to trade. One is like, you know, a lot of traders in my, uh, this morning took this short and even in pre-market, I called the short at 254. We had a 254 short. Uh, this uh, level over here, we were looking before a bookmark. This level over here, this level, 254. Uh, by the time was the open over here was around 247, 246. So one can trade one, um shot and hold it you know you can have like uh, your target scale out whatever or if you have confidence in reading also book map because that's necessary you can simply start your short could be here or could be here right on a trend line break or on that uh rejection of this support with the v weapon 90 main j lines but then also when you have these bear flags and we have a lot of bear flags you can see i traced them over here uh, this is a, a major pullback, okay? So it's resetting. So right now I'm looking for this level over here. Around 225, I'm looking at heat map. So if we have that heat map over here, I'm gonna add a little bit more short for this unwind. So each time we have this, we can, if we're like getting out, for example, over here, over here, we can re-add a little bit, we re-add a little bit. So you get out, let's say one third position. Okay, let's re-add one third position. And now you assume as your risk trailing the money with the new average. Because by doing that, you're going to simply, if the trade goes, okay, so if the trend goes down, you're going to simply collect more money and make more money over here than ever. So it's like adding to your position. So adding the money, recycling. And I simply love that idea. Uh, Joseph, is there anything at, at, at the moment you're um, looking at? Yes. So I have position, actually, Mabia has position still on Netflix. Uh, we uh, were looking at Tesla just now. This morning, we are holding uh, this LLAP. And this is what I call a pump and dump. Uh, I'm gonna put this up over here. Oh, LLAP. Oh, I already subscribed, sorry, uh, over here. Uh, just look at this, traders. This was a perfect, a perfect way to trade halt levels. Okay. So, first of all, the daily. Um, I said one thing very clearly over here. 
I just want to post it so it's clear what was my call. I said one thing. NLP looked to short $8. And then a trader asked me, Jay, why? Previous supply and uh, Jay lines on the daily. So this is our daily. Uh, we had this uh, previous supply. So resistance. So this is really how to trade a pump and dump. And uh, and once we had that rejection after the halt, we had the push over here. You can see it open at around 760, 750. It pushed to this eight. And that eight is the daily level we were watching. This over here, right? So we had like an exhaustion right away. I saw sellers jumping in. So we decided to trade into this 730, 740. All right. Uh, this, for example, is a, an execution from, uh, from a member. And uh, we are looking for that fade. Now, what I want to see when I do this. First of all, I want to see that we cannot reclaim anymore the daily resistance. Second, I want to look for orders, selling orders, like jumping in. And if you see over here, traders, we have a nice seller here, and then a more seller here. This really uh, confers my thesis. And then I want to see third, okay, so one, the, we don't go uh, reclaiming more of the resistance. Second, the heat maps. Third, I want to see a lower high. This is a nice lower high, right? Uh, we can see a trend line break. I mean, this is amazing. Now the target of here is 480. So I want to stay for 480 target. Okay, makes sense, traders. Any question on this? Uh, yeah. What What about the bounce off of your um, uh, blue line there? Uh, I don't want to take that, uh, Bruce. For two main reasons. One, I don't have like, you know, a huge amount of heat map over here. Uh, like, for example, this morning we had an ALVR and then after we review. Second is, uh, and by the way, Bruce, we are giving a lot of information on this. I mean, traders, if they're just like following what we're going to say, and what they're saying each week, they're going to learn a lot. And, and we're adequate traders. So that's something I really like. So give really a thumb up traders for Bruce and for the guys over here for Bookmap, they're doing all this, and it's, I think, something very valuable. Um, so, not long enough here for the reason that we have already a stock that is doing a pump and dump. We have no huge such demand over here. I don't see any kind of big liquidity. We had like some uh, support over here, but you see they're moving down, you know, seems like they're, they're just like spoofing and they're guiding this down, and that's really funny. At the same time, I'm looking for these pots for uh, a pop like this in rejection. Okay, so uh, look over here. We have a resistance, right, guys? 670, 665. So we have this. This is a wall of sellers. And you may say, Jay, this is not a lot of selling pressure. Well, it is. You have to consider how much this is trading. So if we have this push, And we have this. I'm looking for a short until this down, level down here. Okay. So we'll post it over here in the Bookmap Discord room. Over here. So this is, remember, a pump and dump scenario. I'm going to write over here pump and dump scenario on uh, LLAP. And I really look for this this is great i mean like you're looking at your higher time frame levels uh you know your strategies you're looking for a bounce off of the blue line there or the blue zone but the heat map is telling you something different the order flow is telling you something different mm -hmm. exactly 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 i mean this is this is just classic it's like uh, we we pound on the table all the time like look at your you know if you're a volume for profile trader your high volume node low volume nodes whatever like what is the order flow around those areas uh, that's what's going to give you the edge uh, so anyway exactly uh, 
what I what I want to say also, what I want to add over here is that uh, give yourself time to learn this stuff, uh, especially because this market is a really tough market if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, I see a lot of traders that are getting, I would say, um, um, a bad results because they don't know still the, the setups to trade. They don't recognize the pattern. They don't read the order flow. So it's putting more things together. You cannot simply look at the chart and trade the levels, in my opinion. Okay, then I don't say nobody does it and nobody is profitable only doing that. But personally, it's like, you know, it's like when you want to become an athlete. You have to work on every single part of your body, mind, condition, uh, plan. So it's sticking more things together. For me, it's like strategy, risk management, mental discipline, and all sort of flow. And when you put all these together, you become a complete trader. All right? It's like if you're, I don't know, you're a soccer player and you only know like uh, to play in defense. And then when, you're, when your team moves like an, an offense over here, you don't know, you know how to play. So... Learn how to put all the aspects together. And now, the other one that I'm uh, looking at, I don't have a position over here. Uh, this morning, I can say I traded. Bruce will already understand where I shorted. So some of the guys longed it, and they longed over here, like my friend Pierre. He took one box and 40 cents per share. Uh, and... Uh, we had this, uh, you see this dip over here, right? The reclaim of the VWAP around uh, 670. So this was a very good trade, uh, but I missed the trade. So once I miss the trade, what I'm going to do? I'm not really going to jump in again. I'm not really uh, just like uh, having FOMO and, and trying to, to grab something that already left. Okay, that's not my style. So I waited and uh, I was looking for uh, dip to long. This was too fast. I missed it again. I said, no, well, two times I missed this. And then I was looking at those levels. And you can see over here, I mean, something beautiful. This. Uh, Bruce, when I saw this, I was in tears. And I basically shorted over here, over here, covered, cover everything over here. Actually, sorry, over here. So I took a, not a, you know, a home run, not something like, wow, we're gonna make so much money over here. But a point is that I use a heat map and how I use it is simply perfect. So I'm not saying this, I'm, I mean, I was showing this live when I was doing it and I was explaining this with all the process. Uh, now what I'm looking is ideally this, uh, you see this heat map over here, the 790, but I'm always careful uh, when I have this kind of volume on a, on a, on a stock above the pre-market high. This, this white line is the pre-market high. So we are at the pre-market high. Let me say just a little bit above the pre-market high. So careful, I mean, trading short this. It has to have like a fast blow up like we had it. But I mean, this over here. This is the reason why this morning I shorted. So I'm going to post also this. So you have like a reference also, right? Reason why shorted. So this is really called gap and extension play. And you can see the reference up here. Gap and extension play. So it's a really systematic approach. Uh, let me share over here in the book map in this core room. Uh, this. And this trader is, is, uh, is a low risk setup, gap and extension. So now what I'm looking at, I said that 790. I mean, ideally, we have the 790. Is gonna it's gonna be a good setup. Rather than that, I'm still waiting. Okay, I don't want to jump in something just to trade.
Tesla. Okay, Tesla, we're getting to that uh, level over here at uh, 1,010. So there's a big confluence of VWAP and other things. We also have a big push right now, CRXT. My beer. Yeah. CRXT. So it's above the pre market high. Uh, I, I was sure I had it before over here, CRXT. So at this point, what I'm doing over here on CRXT, I'm going to put this one second. I'm going to look for a daily level. Uh, so we have some uh, resistance over here. And then we have more over here. We have more over here. So I'm looking for the high volume levels. So from 250, yeah, I don't see any kind of other levels above 250. Wow. So from 250, we go to 365. Let's look at CRXT. Nice heat map over here. Very nice heat map on a lower high. The 248 is pretty low risk to take the trade. So we have a, it's a small trend line, okay? So the order over here is moving from here. Okay, so first it was stopping out these two levels. So it was stopping out over here, came, I had basically soaked over here 250, and then it disappeared. Or it basically selling over here and just like pushing down stock now. Yeah, I, I missed this. Okay, I missed this. And so, yeah, Joseph, if you can, like, this is really important because, like, you knew it was going to do this. Um, and you could have gotten in at like 42 or, uh, or where, yeah, somewhere around there, uh, because that's yeah. where it was. Uh, and, um, uh, and that's when you mentioned it somewhere around there, 40, 42. Um, yeah. w w tell us why you didn't take the trade. Uh, basically traders is, uh, I was not ready with, uh, with the, with the brokers. Remember you have to borrow. This is a hard to borrow stock. So not all the brokers are, uh, give you the, the possibility to trade this, but I had bars this morning. Uh, the fact is I simply missed the timing. I mean, I have to be super ready when I trade. If I miss a, uh, an entry where I want to take it, let's say 244 between 248, that was my level. Then over here, you know, 236, 238 is already too low. Because like, then I have to stop, being that I want to take some size. I don't want to stop with, uh, you know, 15 cents. It's not my my trade, okay? Uh, so I have to wait. Uh, that's, that's of course, uh, what I'm going to do. I have to wait over here. So, I mean, like, how, like, uh, did you um, start to kind of, you, I mean, you feel okay about it. Like, uh, you're, I mean, it, it makes me sick to my stomach a lot of the times when I see, it's like, ah, oh, I missed it, you know? But 
this is a part of the game. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and, and now the risk reward is not in your favor or it's not what you do. Um, so how did you kind of learn that or overcome that? I believe with a lot of practice and uh, by journaling your results. So every end of the week, I get all my trades and I classify them, I divide them by um, setup traded. And then I have like a template, which is, a, I would say, a methodical sheet where I put all my yes or no based on different questions. And these questions are regarding uh, emotions and discipline and trading plan and how I executed the plan. If I had guts, if I trusted my gut, if I was like patient, stress or whatever. So I have like, I believe, uh, 78 uh, questions on that. So I can see how I was uh, trading that week, what was the main setup that I traded, which was the setup with the high win rate and the highest return, which one the poorest uh, and uh, I would say worst uh, setup for me, what are the best stocks, what were the best uh, coins, what were the best futures. I believe I take two hours to do this every Friday and uh, or actually every Saturday morning, but it really helps you to become a better trader. So if you think that traders is just like you know, trading, taking a chart up and uh, just simply trading. No, uh, don't do it. It's just not like that. There's so much more involved. Okay. There's so much more. So uh, CRXT, we, we missed it. ALVR. It was ALVR, right? No? Yes. Okay. ALVR. ALVR. So don't worry, Trader, we're still going to watch uh, Netflix and, uh, and Tesla. Yeah, that, that could be interesting. Yeah. Exactly. So LVR over here is lateral. Uh, still on LLAP. So on this trade I'm in. My average is uh, my average is uh, 754. Breakdown ALDR. So I'm up over here one buck and uh, thirteen cent and uh, thirty three cents on uh, LLAP, I'm waiting for 480. So even if you take only 1,000 shares on this and it goes down to five bucks, you may have to like your nice thousand. We'll need this trade itself. And the most important thing is, uh, don't think about the money when you trade, think about the R return. Because when I took the trade, uh, my entry, I missed the entry over here. I want the better entry. I got the entry over here. And my risk was this. So I was risking, in this case, uh, 60 cents. And now, if I measure from here, from my entry down to here, so you have to do all this, divide it 60 cents, and you have your R. Okay, so calculate always uh using the risk all right let's go back to tesla and netflix so joseph i mean that's the 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 risk reward that you're outlining there um however uh you know, a lot of times you take partials uh, and, and also scale in. Uh, that's true as well. Uh, but so, but you're not holding, like, I mean, you're holding for that, that longer uh, move or that longer or higher time frame move, uh, but not necessarily, though. And how, how do you kind of deal with the risk management on that? 
Uh, what do you mean, Bruce? Uh, not necessarily. Well, because I mean, you you have your your ultimate target, but uh, uh, y you know, it, it may not get there, uh, mm. and and mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, it's a big it's a big target, uh, mm -hmm. and um, you know, uh, time of day, like so let's say end of the day, like are you still holding this, or like you you start to see lots of buyers start to come in, are you still holding this? Um, like how how okay. how would you go through some of those scenarios? Okay, so I I got what you mean. So it's a it's a big question, and I think it's uh, one of the most important. Uh, I would say uh, sectors for a trader to improve, uh, because everybody focuses always on the entry, uh, and uh, everybody put a stop to stop loss now, but nobody has you know the clue where exactly this will go we have one thing that is sure we have the thing that we took the trade and we are stop loss so we have two things that are certain but we don't know where the stock will go so we don't know the target if it goes bad we have our stop loss okay so that is set but then you have like you know your big point over here and uh you're you're just saying okay now what because from that really depends you becoming a millionaire or you becoming broke or you becoming average. So you want to become like a filthy rich. You'll become like a good trader. You will become a full-time trader. Whatever that is your goal, fine. But you have to measure these stocks by using statistics and also by using, for example, the order flow. I have some precise rules uh, when I trail, and I leave that really to to who gets a, a private uh, uh, lesson with me, but based on stats, okay, and results. So I know exactly how many times from here I will get hit here, here, here. So I know exactly how to trail. But again, if I'm in a trade and I don't see any kind of resistance, all right? jumping in jumping in then i start wondering if this is a good trade or not for for a short i mean now i'm just like relaxing because i know that i'm still full size i know that if it goes over here to above now this trailing 630 i'm going to trail partial if it's going to go everything above over here around 710 i'm going to trail all okay so i have these two main levels in my mind so until there i can simply relax and uh, if it continues to go, and I continue to see these uh, lower highs, then for me, why not to hold it? You know, the, essentially, bookmap is telling me if I have to get out or not. All right, bookmap is telling me. Uh, we don't have any clue, okay? I don't have any clue if uh, a stock in about one hour We'll have like you know an institutional order or whatever, and that we're gonna have like a a, a big one, a big push, a big squeeze. Who knows? For now, what I can say is that all right, this is fading. Volume is weak. No big orders on the buy. Order flow, lower highs, lower lows. Good. I'm staying in. So this is the process that I believe traders have to do. Yeah, yeah, great, great stuff, Joseph. Thank you, Bruce. So, um, CRXT again, and also Tesla. Okay, so Tesla over here, we had an entry. Uh, just here so this is a very low risk entry because once we enter on the trend line i just want to risk a little bit above and uh, in this case over here 1005 Now, next target, 1,000. 
next target 992. Personally, no, I didn't take it. Okay, so I didn't take I'm over here explaining. I'm not in that trade. Uh, I'm just like holding Netflix over here, actually, Mao Bear. Yeah. But this is a very good entry. So perfect setup. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. In the meantime, I also have to look at CRXT. Could possibly push over here. We have a higher low, a lower high. Yeah, mostly like a symmetric triangle over here. Always watch for the patterns. Waiting for for the crack at 250. So a push crack of this 250. So break of 250 stuff and then short. Or Jalen's over here to buy the dip. Take a lot of patience. I'm looking right now at 20 stocks my other screens at the same time two futures and three coins so uh, a lot of stuff to watch what do you think traders today what that was going to do on the earning, earnings Okay, let's check again over here, uh, CRXT. Uh, you're the you're the expert on Tesla. What what uh, what, what do you think on earnings? I don't like to trade before the earnings. I mean, like hold the position after for the earnings, or when I had their. Uh, like let's say after one minute after the earnings, so I already have a direction, or I simply wait for the morning after. Hmm. Uh, personally, in the condition I am tonight, I will uh, I will simply wait. Uh, Alan's asking about how you look at dark pools. Yes, I'm uh, looking at dark pools. Uh, you have to look with uh, your broker if you have access. 
Uh, a book map will show if you, you have access to the MBBO, a national best bid novel. Yeah. I mean, book map yes. will show it as well. Yes. I mean, you, you, you showed like a million, one trade for like a million shares, like, I don't know, a multi-million dollar trade, obviously. Uh, uh, and it had to be a dark pool. There's just no way around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see the CRXD over here. So they're trying to hold over here support. So what you saw over here, Bruce, we had a stuff, but you see the price is still holding, right? It came to that 250 spike right away rejection. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if we could make it back down to your. Uh... I, I have no position over here on CRXD. Uh, I'm still I'm still waiting. Bobby, are you ready? Yes. Oh. Uh, was it tried it? Mm -hmm. so they're trying to push over here, traders. You can see the, the orders 228, 230, 235. again 250 248 to 50 still waiting you have to wait that push mm -hmm. yeah uh let's see over here This is the MBBO traders. You see it like this, right? A lot of traders, uh, MC, they're looking for good earnings on Tesla. And uh, I would say yes. I would say also yes, but you know, I don't wanna um, use any lotto options over here. So they're holding over here this 241 right now. Body is uh holding that support is refilling. We went down to eleven thousand now back to twenty three thousand.
they're definitely going to do something over here. 77 million traded. Crazy amount of volume for this small cap. Holding support to 40 to 41. As I said, I'm looking for a fake out of this 255 to short. Two thirty five support. Remember, this is also fib level. It's really often, you know, just about uh, waiting the opportunity, waiting the opportunity. But I can tell you when we have that opportunity, we have to wait for that trade. It can be a fantastic trade over here. Never anticipate, okay? Thirty four. Rejection 246. So there is a little bit of, uh, I would say, fight between uh, supply and demand. All right, so let's continue to watch Tesla and Netflix. So Tesla and Wine are pretty good. Remember, we are looking for that uh, trade. This is the pop and fill the gate. So 
So this is not me, but this is how you trade it. Okay, push traders coming, CRXT, please check. Yeah. So look at extension map here. Looking to short between 265 and 280. Let's see for this push. Let's see if we have a stuff. So 262. It took a starter, CRXT. Waiting stuff to load. Yeah. So I took a starter because I saw over here some topping. I know that's a pretty good level to take a starter. Very, very small. I'm waiting for that A plus setup. Because over here, you have to consider that this is a breakout. They will look for a push. Yes. So some big volume over here. Okay, I'm loaded to 80. Loaded to 80. Loaded to 80. Mm -hmm. Now I'm waiting for this to fail. So extension play. And let's see if we can fail below the 245. Uh, nice over here, 260, think we can have a breakdown. In this case, my risk is 283. See the second one over here, pretty good. Yeah. My average is 273, so I'm risking 10 cents. Actually, I'm going to risk this 286 over here. I saw some big buyer 275, you can see over here. So trade is not working. I'm downsizing. 
at 275. So I'm uh, lowering my risk. Why? Because after this stuff over here, I wanted this to see a fail. Instead, it's not fading. So I downsize, now risking this with the rest, 286. Average over here is still the same. And if it goes down, that's fine. But if it goes up, I won't have a big stop. And also, I want to keep my uh, big win for the day. I'm actually downsizing all of it here. And so I downsized, downsized also all out for me. 274. I don't care if we'll go. That's my risk management. Now a little bit more sellers. I will wait for a classic lower high and then I can short this again. So I lost one cent over here taking this trade. And that's fine for, for this. Let's see if we can have a lower high and then a short. Meanwhile, Tesla is unwinding good. Okay, Twitter. So, uh, almost time for us. Any questions? Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, most is, uh, seems when you enter a trade, there's a pop up or down near an important area. For those entries, do you initially keep large stops and reduce the risk after you are on the trade? If not, with stop loss, with small stop loss, does it uh, does not that stop you out most of the time? Okay, okay, I got it. So uh, when you trade uh, on a fader, so in downtrend, it's very easy to know where you stop because generally you risk you know just above your entry or a relative high or the bar. When instead you're trading uh, an uptrending stock, then you have to look at daily levels. So. If I have, for example, like over here, uh, let's put back uh, LLAP. So right now it's 584. I shorted, as I said before, 754. My risk was 810. So I was risking something like, you know, almost 60 cents. In that case, I'm risking 60 cents, which seems a lot. But you have to know that I'm looking for that. Oh, sorry, traders. A possible trade coming. Okay. I'm risking traders for uh, one R because I know that I will get three or four R. So I want to definitely take the trade. Uh, I don't, you know, put large stop or small stop. I put stop where I have like levels on the daily and a heat map together. Okay, that is my point. Uh, other question over here Would you sell and add the money straddle on Tesla to get premium on the volatility curve? Not really. I prefer, I simply buy calls, buy puts. I don't use like any other strategy. So I keep it very simple using the underlying stock. That's my way of doing things. And that's what really has been pain for me. Any other question, traders? Well, I think we're doing pretty well here. And... Okay, 
no, I think we're all we're all squared away, uh, Joseph. Uh, so uh, uh, invaluable uh, uh, nuggets here. Uh, you know, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Joseph. Um, you know, really, really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I put uh, your information into the chat if anyone wants to reach out, if they have any other questions they want to um, uh, let you know, uh, and you, the services that you offer, etc. cetera. Uh, so, okay. uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's that. And then uh, just uh, let everybody know there is a bookmap special event. Um, uh, later today at the close, uh, uh, U.S. close here, so at 4 p.m. Uh, take a look in Discord, uh, and uh, uh, you'll see it there uh, with um, uh, a, a, a new guy here. Uh, we'll, we'll have uh, uh, Brett Mayo. Uh, he'll, he'll be there. All right, so uh, talking about uh, uh, stocks and entries and, and uh, filtering, etc. cetera. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, Joseph... Uh, uh, excellent stuff here, and uh, let's do some more events together. Uh, you had mentioned this; you wanted to, so uh, I would love to, you know, do some. Um, uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll get creative and, and think of some things. Maybe at the open again, uh, how you trade the open, uh, and uh, those were really popular, uh, and they were they were excellent. So, uh, oh, Bruce, look, of look course, we can uh, make uh, some of this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All yeah. right, guys. So. Uh, Thank you for the great session. I mean, the market was great today. So hope you learned something. Uh, again, uh, you can reach out to me, uh, team at Co email, or Bruce, or just write me on Discord. Again, see you all next week. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bookmap. Bookmap and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye, traders. Thanks, Joseph.